I don't want to start this meeting in, until I know God is in this place. I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak unless God is speaking through me. Amen. I don't want to just another boring Tuesday night. Just another Tuesday night. I, I want. I want this life. This night to change lives tonight. Yes. I don't want any of us to walk out of here the same way we came in. If, if Jesus is in here, it's, it might as well be all garbage. Amen? Amen? Father God, we just thank you for tonight, for this gathering. Thank you for all the testimonies, Lord. Thank you that you, Jesus, are our healer. You are our provider. You are the evangelist, Father God, that is reaching the lost, that you came to seek and save the lost, Father God. I thank you for tonight, Lord. Father, I pray you put the words in my mouth, Lord. Use me as an honorable vessel, Lord. Get me out of the way, Lord. Let people see you. I pray you open up their ears, Father, so you can, they can their spiritual ears, so they can hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour, Lord God. I pray that you prepare their hearts to just till the soil of their hearts, Lord God. I pray you remove any distractions throughout the day, the social media, the the, um, the TV, the radio, anything that, that is hindering them from, from hearing your voice, Father God. I pray you remove the distractions, Lord, and let us set our eyes like flint upon you tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that this seed, that no enemy or devil in hell can snatch this seed that will be planted tonight. Father God, for everybody watching, Father God, bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I, I had a I had a great weekend. I was out there in uh, Lakeland, Florida, with, with some brother, uh, beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, Matt, shout out to Matt Cruz. He came down from Chicago, and he's like, I want to go evangelize. So we we went out to the mall there in Lakeland, Lakeland Square Mall. And man, God just showed up. I'm talking about people were just giving their lives to Christ right there on the spot. Like it was nothing, it was like taking candy from a baby. Uh, my brother Isaac went right up to these teens, he said, I'll be right back, and he just flew over there. And it was a group of uh, African-American kids, it was about six of them, high school, high school. He said, I just wanna share my heart with you guys, is that okay? And they all just locked into this guy. Wow. And he just started sharing his testimony, pouring out his heart. And then he shared the gospel, and he said, he said is, there, is there anyone here that, that would like to receive that right now and encounter Jesus. Five out of the six of them stood up. Awesome. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Wow. This, this, is, this is what the send was all about. It was about activating us to get out there into the, into the vineyard. So they, we, we stood in a circle and, and these, these kids just confessed them with their mouth. And like Pastor Jason said, we wanna get them saved first before you get them filled. We want to get them saved before we get them filled. And, and we, we got into contact with them. And the next step is discipleship. Like my mom said, we got to teach each one, reach one. And when you reach one, we teach one. You know, we don't have to stand on a pulpit or go to stadiums. The most important thing to Jesus is, if you could, is the selfless things we do. The stuff that no one sees. The stuff that no one hears about. That's the most important things to God. Amen? Amen. It's just as important as filling up a stadium as it is sitting down one-on-one -on -one with a man and discipling him when the cameras ain't rolling. So I say that to say this. It was a beautiful weekend, but guess what? The next day, Monday, I got to die. I got to die. And that's why I'm wearing this fancy suit tonight, because tonight is my funeral. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Tonight is my funeral. I said, God, what am I going to preach on today? And he said, I want you to put on your black suit and get ready to die. Woo. So he told me that last night. I woke up to a text from my brother-in-law of wow. something about suits. And I was like, that's a confirmation. Because I, I usually don't dress like this on a Tuesday night. Come on, somebody. Jesus. He said, it's time to die. Because you can have the most greatest night, the greatest weekend in Jesus. You just led many people to wow. Christ. You had a victory. But guess what? You, you stay up there in that victory zone. You get satisfied. And guess what? The devil will come up lurking. You got to die. Jesus. So he can live. Amen? Amen. This flesh is no good. Wow. This flesh, no good. 
and I can't do anything good for the kingdom in my flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we can't, we, it's, it's, it's time, it's time for more. We gotta, we can't be, we can't be satisfied with just being saved. We can't be satisfied with just being saved. Oh, one day I'm going to go to heaven. No, there's more. He's got more for us to do while we're here, guys. There's hurting people out there. There's more Jesuses. There's more Anthony's. There's more, there's more Lorians out there that are waiting for us to go share the message of hope. It doesn't stop with us. And we're going to talk about that tonight, how Jesus was the first fruit for all mankind. So Paul, Paul, Paul wrote to the Corinthians. He said, he said, I die daily. But I thought it was a one-time thing. I thought I'd go to this mega church, I, I say a prayer, and I, I say, uh, you know, Lord, forgive me, come into my heart, and I, then I live as I please. <laughs> That's the American gospel, no? Yeah. Paul said, I die daily. I die daily. When I wake up in the morning, guess what? I gotta die. I gotta hit the floor and hit that coffin. Anything good I do is because of Jesus. He gets all the glory yes, for our lives. Amen. And he won't take anything else. He's a jealous God, amen? amen. So it's just not a one-time thing. This is every day is salvation. Every day is salvation. All right, I got a few scriptures for you. It, w it wouldn't be a Bible study without the without the Bible, right? <laughs> my Bible, I'm so heartbroken. I left I left my bag. Everyone knows me. That I know I, I always have that brown bag with me. When I got that bag, you know I mean business. So I I, I was out. I was so excited from 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 the weekend out sharing the gospel that. Uh, and then we, we went out to eat after at Chili's and, and we were just having such a grand old time. I left my Bible at my friend's house. I, my, my Bible bag. I got my oil in there. I got my Bible in there from, from, from 1965. I got my... Uh, wow. Three pens. I had three pens in there. <laughs> so the whole thing got soaked. My mom's like, don't worry, because God's pouring out the new wine. Come on, somebody. <laughs> New wine skin. All right, Galatians 2.20. This is the verse we want to have on our hearts. So it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. How many people can say that? How many people can say that? Yes. Amen. And it's a war. It's a war against our flesh and the spirit. Yes. Flesh man don't want to do any of that stuff. Flesh man didn't want to come to church tonight. Come on, somebody. Yes, that's right. God already gave us, God already gave us all of himself. But the question tonight is, how much of you, yourself, are you willing to give God? How much of yourself are you willing to give God? Is Jesus just a piece of your life? Is he just a piece, piece of the pizza pie? Is he just like an addition on? Is he like just some nice rims on your car? He's just part of it, right? Or is he your all in all? Come on, come on. Man. Shut up, Come on. Jesus. He's everything. He's the Alpha, the Omega. Come on. It's, it's in him that we have we move, we live, we breathe, we have our being. He's everything, guys. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Sometimes I don't even want to use these. Holy Spirit just take over. So, so Jesus, Jesus, you gave, you gave everything for me. I'm ready to give everything to you. Amen? Yes. That's what we need to say. How bad do you want it, guys? Come on. How bad do you want revival? How bad do you want to see your, your, fam your whole family get to heaven? 
How bad do you want to see your neighborhood change? How bad do you want to see the government change and the things going on in the world? How bad do you want it? Will just a Sunday service do it? Will just a, a, a five minute devotional do it? Come on, somebody. How thirsty, how thirsty are we for the things of God? I'm thirsty right now, so I'm gonna take a sip of this water. How thir do we thirst after the things of God? Turn me, turn me, turn me uh, quickly to Psalms 42. This is beautiful. Tonight we're gonna call it the beautiful suicide. I love it. That's Psalms chapter 42. Turn quickly, quickly, quickly. The world's ending. <laughs> you shut up. Amen. All right. Somebody. As the deer pants for the water, Brooks. Wow. So pants my soul for you, oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Someone say a living God. Living God. My God's not dead. When shall I come and when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. When was the last time you had tears for dinner? <laughs> was the last time you had tears for dinner where you were just crying out to God? We were <laughs> When you were just crying out for him for more. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. How hungry are we for the things of God? Right. Are we just skating by on just a little bit? Amen? And that's why fasting is so good. That's why this fasting season is so good. Because America is spoiled. Even the homeless people don't go hungry in America. Right? Amen. Come on. And we're so used to America's so used to getting three hots, you know, minimum. And we gotta keep eating, 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 and we're always, we're always filled, we're always satisfied. That's why a fasting season is so great, because we learn to put the, down the things of the flesh and tap into the spirit. Yes. And that's what God's trying to take us in this season. And that's why he's, he's using Lou Angle and these guys to consecrate a huge fast with over 17,000 people. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I encourage you guys, get on this fast. Even if it's a Daniel fast, to start a juice fast, something. Let's start hungering after the things of God if we want to see revival here. Come on. Yes. Somebody shout amen. We got dry bones in here? Yes. Come on. I know that's not something to shout about. We love our ribeye steaks. But there's, hey. a, there's a whole lot of ribeyes in here. There's a whole lot of hidden ribeyes and mashed potatoes that we haven't had yet. And God's waiting to feed us. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Wow. All right, John chapter 4, verse 32 through 35. This is when, this is when the disciples came to him and, and they said, Rabbi, why aren't you eating? Eat something. Eat something, Rabbi. And Jesus rebuked them. He said, and they said, has, has anyone brought this guy food? Jesus looks a little skinny. When was the last time he ate? <laughs> oh, maybe he stopped on McDonald's on the way. No, he said, they said, Jesus said to them, he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And that's what fasting does. It makes us hungry to do the will of God. Guys, there's something about winning the soul. There's something about seeing somebody become new in Christ, right? Yes. That's why the average Christian just goes to church and never get into the meat and bones of it. Jesus wants us to be involved as co-laborers in Christ to finish his work that he sent his son here to do to reconcile the world back to him. Give him a hand clap. And we're all a part of it. Amen? Every single one of us, from the pinky toe to the head to the eye to the 
to the nostril. Thank you, Jesus. But we're so concerned with self in a selfie world when God's calling us to be selfless. Yes. That's right. It's all about me, me, me. Look at Facebook. Me, me, me. My picture. This, that. And, and they set it up, the likes, and it's, it becomes all about that person. It's vanity. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. We should be pointing people towards Christ. But it's all about self. Everyone's got their self. It's like a zombie apocalypse. They're talking about the zombie blood and the zombie uh, stuff from the deer, right? You guys heard about that? Yeah. Listen, the zombie apocalypse is already here. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on. And God's calling us to be selfless. It's called the kingdom mindset. Put, putting on the kingdom mindset. The American church has become so narcissistic. What could God do for me? Oh, poor me. No, what can I do for others? And that's what the kingdom mindset. How can I get involved in this thing here that God's doing and make an impact and reach my neighbor? How can I go serve over here and serve them? Because when you start serving others, guess what? It takes the attention off yourself and suddenly you start to get healed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That one wasn't in the notes. Everywhere we go should be with a purpose. I'm going to the mall, I'm going to H&M. Great. Are you just going shopping? Or is there somebody hurting in H&M who's thinking about committing suicide tonight? But we won't, we won't know if our nose is all in our selfie. That's why we gotta have discernment and be in the spirit and always be ready to give an account for the hope that is within us. Always be ready. Because somewhere out there, there's someone hurt. When we go to Walmart, or we go to Publix, we're not just going food shopping. Amen? Amen. Somebody in there. We always got to be on an assignment. Jesus was our greatest example. Everywhere he went, he went on an assignment. Yes. He said, I must be about the Father's business. Everywhere he went. He didn't play games. I go to the gym, guys. Guess what? I got convicted about wearing my headphones because I just be all on myself and my set and how much weight I'm gonna lift next. And God told me no more of that. So I don't I don't I don't go with it, go there with headphones anymore. I do my sets, you know, bodily exercise profits little, right? But guess what? Spiritual exercise profits more. I'm praying in tongues in between sets. I shot the so cool of the shit king. I'm preparing the land. I'm tilling the soil for that gym. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm getting it prepared. My sister Lauren, she's a great, a, a great example. She'll be in the gym, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll look over. She'll be laying hands on somebody, preaching the gospel. <laughs> All the gym body is like, "Come on, you're missing the set. It's your turn." She don't care why because she's about the father's business. Give him a hand clap. And we need more people like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. It's about to get good. I saw a lady at Ross the other day, and she's like, she's like, man, I can't wait. Uh, she worked there. She's like, I can't wait to get home and listen to David Wilkinson. She's like, I just, oh, he's so good. He preaches the truth. And, and, and she's like, all these other preachers, they're not preaching anything good. Guys, people have a hunger for the truth, guys. That's right. Come on, somebody. People have a hunger for the truth. We spend so much time tickling ears, right? Trying to fill the churches, but the fruit is rotten. Trust me, if you preach the truth, God will promote you, not man. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Amen? Let's stick to this word. I think God did a good, a good job writing this, amen? Yeah. Why do we got to stray from it? So, even on our jobs, guess what? Jesus, the evangelist, is there in us. We're not just going to a job. It's jo a job is just some place that pays you. Praise God for jobs. Amen. 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 And I encourage everyone watching this, it's okay to have a job. Yep. Amen. It's okay. It's a good thing. It's a blessing to be able to make money and to bless others. That's a good thing. Your job don't have to be the all in all. Hallelujah. 
Because you can show people Jesus right on that job site. Yes, that's right. I was working out in the road last last uh, last year up in Atlanta, and um, around around a rough crowd, <laughs> rough crowd. There wasn't too much Jesus out there. They were saying Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know? But that's why we gotta be a light in the dark. I said, God, just start using me. Just start using me out here. Let me be a vessel. Doesn't mean you gotta stand on the lunch table and start preaching. <laughs> Amen, be wise. Yes. Behold, I send you out in the midst of uh, wolves as, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Ask the Holy Spirit. He'll show you who to talk to, who to take out to lunch. You don't got to be a fanatic. Amen? Amen? And you'll still be able to get your paycheck and get a paycheck in heaven at the same time. Yes. Give him a hand clap. Yes. That's called the double pay. That's called a bonus check. Yeah. Benefits. So I started inviting these guys back to my hotel. Come over. Let me, let me buy you dinner. Preach the gospel to them. People got start getting saved. One guy on the job, he, he was about 50 years old. He called him Big Rick. He had a crippled back. And he's walking. He's like, I'm about to go home. And he's, he could barely walk up the stairs. People were throwing stones at him, making fun of him. I said, I said, come here, brother. The Lord told me to lay hands on him. Wow. And you know what? I want to obey God and not man. Because something in me said, the flesh was like, nah, don't do that. You'll get fired. I took him and I said, let me pray for you, brother. I started praying. The power of God came on him right on that job site. He started straightening up. Come on, somebody. He started straightening up. Praise God. Oh, my gosh. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. He was walking up the stairs like this, right? He's walking up like this. He had to pick up his other leg. And he was running down like this. Come on. Give Jesus a hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, our healer. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So it's okay to have a job. You can know, I know God has bigger plans for me, but while I'm here, I'm going to utilize my talents and my gifts. I'm going to bless this place until God brings me to the next place. Amen? Lord. Yeah. Amen. And your fruit will spark their attention. Your fruit will spark their attention. How come this guy's not cursing? Amen? How come this guy's not complaining that it's been such a rough week? Yeah. How come he's working what he's doing as he's work as if he's working unto the Lord? Whew. Thank you, Lord. If you go on a job site, what if you start to go on a job site? I'm working for you, Jesus. I ain't working for JE construction. I ain't working for B and B plumbing. I'm working as I'm working unto you. And we do our best job and they say, wow, this guy's such a good employee. And guess what? You give the glory to God. When people say, well, how come you're so happy? That's when you give a reason for the hope that's within you. Yes. Amen? Yes. Yes. Always pray for open doors. God, give me an open door. Yes. Paul said that. Pray, that. pray that doors will open for me to preach the message. Right? You guys remember that? Yep. And we got to pray for that every morning. He'll open doors. What are you listening to, sister? Oh, oh this is just that kingdom music. <laughs> What's kingdom music? I never heard of that. Well, sit down. Let me tell you about it. Yeah, thank you, God. Come on, somebody. Thank you, God. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We're called to be set apart for a greater purpose. Yes, sir. You don't have to fit in with the people on the job site. You aren't born to fit in with the people in this world. You're born to be a beacon of light. Come on. Unashamed. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a messenger. Calling all the messengers. We're calling all the messengers. Turn to your name and say you're an evangelist. You're an evangelist. You're an evangelist. <laughs> what? Me? Yes. Yeah. The, word, the word evangel means bringing the good news. How many? How many saved folks in here? Thank you, Lord. You carry the good news. That's what an evangelist is. Amen. You got the answer to the world's problems. While this world is suffering. We hold the answer. We got the keys to the kingdom that can unlock somebody's prison door. Give them a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you. We 
withhold that answer. But now back to the funeral service. It starts with dying. It starts with dying. Dying to what? Dying to self. Write this down if you're taking notes. You gotta die before you can truly live. You gotta die before you can truly live. It's called a beautiful suicide. Usually suicides are sad, but this is beautiful. Amen? Yes. Amen. I'm gonna wrap this up here. John, John chapter 12, verse 24. Turn there quickly. This is the key verse to the night. It says, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where, where I am, excuse me, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Yes. Amen. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Christ is the example. He was the first fruits, right? He was the first fruits to start this new Jesus movement. It started with Adam. Adam blew it. God sent his only son, and he was the first fruits. He's our example. And we're called to follow his example. Even Paul knew that. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul didn't want to be a superstar. When they said he was a hero, he started ripping his clothes off. He said, no, you got this all twisted. It's not me, but it's Christ who lives in me. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, Today I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. Somebody say life and death. death. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendants, somebody say me and my family, may live. How many people choose life here today? Life. Pro-life, pro-life, pro-life. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Make a, make a decision tonight to choose life. How do we choose life? We choose life by choosing to die with Christ so that the same way he rose from the dead, the same way God rose him up on the third day, guess what? We will also rise with him. Jesus is saying, choose to hate your life. What? That's pretty harsh. Jesus is saying, choose to hate your life in this world the way I, I have chosen the cross. The same way Jesus chose that cross, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, is there any way you could take this cup from me? Is there any way? And he said, not my will, but your will be done. How many of us can say that and mean it? And that's what God's waiting for. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That's what he's waiting for. And on the other side of that is something so beautiful that words can't even express. It's a peace that passes all understanding. Come on. It's a, it's a, it's a boldness, guys. Come on. It's a restoration. It's a redemption, guys. It's amazing. If only we'll say, I'm ready to die. Jesus said, only those who do the will of my Father will inherit the kingdom. Some Bibles take that verse out. 
But in the Bible, Ari is still there. Amen. I believe everyone's here tonight under the sound of my voice to, to hear these words and take heed to it. Jesus said, if you build your house on a rock, guess what? The Hurricane Irma will come, Hurricane Matthew, and nothing can knock that house down because it's on a firm foundation, and Christ is that rock. But the foolish man builds his house on the sand, and when the flood came, it took everything with it. Some people watching right now, that's how your life's been going. It's been being tossed to and fro. You're up and down, you're all over the place. Ask yourself, what foundation is my house built on? Amen? Amen. Do you have hurricane protection? Get a discount for that, you know? So he calls us, he says, if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us in front of the Father. A lot of people won't deny Jesus, but they'll deny his word. Yeah. Catch that. Mm -hmm. If you follow in my word, you will be my disciples. Amen? Yes. Amen. So almost, we're almost done with the funeral service here. Amen. You guys will be burying me soon. <laughs> Rest in peace. Thank you, Lord. So he calls us to choose the cross. Why would, why would I want to choose the cross? And I want to ask you something. What do people do with a cross? Back in the day, people only did one thing with a cross. What they do? They tattoo it on them. They put it on their neck. Jesus didn't call us to get a tattoo of a cross. He didn't call us to get a, a chain with a cross. They died on it. Hallelujah. Take up your cross means be like a grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies. Mm. But how many, how many people know the story doesn't stop there? That Jesus ain't just gonna let us just go to the ground and die. He's not just gonna let us stay there dead. Come on, I need somebody to shout hallelujah. Because he was the risen king. He's the one who did die. And he was the only one that defeated death, came to life on the third day, went to Hades, took the keys, and said, here you go. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just got a new Nissan, brother. <laughs> and the keys to the kingdom. That's the best part. Hey. It's called the great exchange. He's saying you got to pick up your cross. But picking up your cross also means you die on that cross. Yes. Yes. And you leave your old man that dead to that cross. Your old Facebook account, don't even look back. Your old MySpace, your old life, your old stories, forget about that. God's got a brand new story for you. He's got a brand new story for you. And he's going to use you to change this world, be a nation shaker, and do things that you couldn't even imagine, more than you can even think. Or imagine exceedingly abundantly more, guys. How amazing is that? Come on, somebody. We're more than just electricians. Come on, Anthony. We're more. We're more than just uh, mechanics or lawyers or, or or salesmen. We're more than that. That's not our identity. Our identity is in Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. And he called us to change this world, to heal the sick, to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover, to cast out demons, right, Jesus? Come on, somebody. Yes. Wow. And he wants to do it through any one of us. He's not a respecter of persons. So tonight I'm saying give up your life and, and he'll give you his. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. To give us life and life more abundantly. 
Turn to your name and say, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Come on, somebody. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Nah, well, you know what? We got time. I'm still young. I'm only 31. I'll wait till next week to, to nail myself to the cross. I'll wait till next week to pick up my cross. I know God's been calling me, but you know, I got some more time. I want to have a few more girlfriends. I want to shake my booty a little bit in the club. You know, I want to, um, I got dreams and aspirations. I want to make, I want to be a millionaire. Let me get the money first and then, I'll, and then I'll be set and then I can follow Jesus. How many people know that story when Jesus said, follow me? He said, first, let me do this. And you've never heard about that man again. Don't let that be you. Yes. He's calling us tonight. Yeah. I'm going to close it out with this scripture. Mark chapter 13. This is very important. If you haven't been paying attention all service, pay attention to this one. You know when the Bible says, read or pay attention? This is one of those verses. Mark chapter 13, verse 32 through 36. Thank you, Lord. Anybody know what time it is? Now. 8.36. 8.36, amen. This meeting started at 7, so people knew to come here at 7, right? Yeah. I don't be there at 7, you know, we'll meet them there, right? But when the day when the Son of Man returns, no one knows the day yeah. or the hour. Amen. Come on. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray. Don't just say pray, it says watch and pray. For you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, if you do not know the master of the house is coming in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay woke. And what I say, I say to every single one of you, watch. Thank you, Lord. Watch. Because yes. he's coming back like a thief in the night. Yes. Yes, Lord. They don't preach this in most churches. Yes, Lord. And a lot of people are being deceived. Why? Because they're watering down the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Stay ready. Turn your name and say, you don't got to get ready if you stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. The virgins. Don't be like the foolish virgins, right? They, they, who tried to, bought, when, when, uh, when Jesus came, when the master came back, the, there was ten virgins, five foolish, five wise. The five foolish ones, they didn't have their lamp in their oil in their lamp. They said, I got time. I'll get oil next week. I'll get oil the next week, right? And then the other ones had the oil. But guess what? The foolish ones, they said, let me, let me, let me borrow some of your oil. Excuse me. Let me borrow some of your oil. But it was too late. And the master slammed the door shut. <laughs> we gotta make sure we keep that oil in our lamps, guys. I know you see people who are on fire. You see people who are all in, they're winning souls, they're doing the work, they're full of joy, they're full of the fruits of the spirit. You can tell these people laid down their life to the cross to follow Christ. And a lot of people are on looking and saying, wow, I wish that was me, or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give it all up someday. But guess what, guys? When, when he returns, you're not gonna be able to go to that on fire believer and get any of their oil. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, get your own. And this ain't no oil shortage, there's plenty of it. Amen? Yes. Amen? And he's ready to pour it on you. He's just waiting for you to say yes. 
Amen. Amen. Get your own oil. I'm going to end with this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 45 through 51. It says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Amen? But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Uh, he's not coming. Jesus ain't coming back anytime soon. It's already been 2019 years. He's not coming back anytime. You know, I got time. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunkards and party and not follow God's will, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him into and appoint him his portion in with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. The word of God. Brethren, let us not be like those foolish virgins. Let us not be like the servants who, who, who weren't paying watch. Amen? He said that the road is narrow and few find it. Few. He didn't say many. Few find it. Guys, we're blessed to be hearing this word tonight. Because yes. in many countries, Pastor Mike knows, and, and Josh, as you travel, you see people, they don't, they never even heard the name of Jesus. And we, we hear it here in America, but we take it for granted. We take it for granted, guys. But guess what? We're accountable for every word we hear. We're accountable for this word right now. Amen? Yes. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for your, your word tonight, Father that will not return null and void, but it will, it will go out and it will accomplish what it was set out to do. Father God, you, you put your word even above your name. Father, I pray that this word will just heal people's hearts tonight, Father God, that it will just take heed to what the Spirit is saying in this hour, Father. You are calling your bride. You're coming back for a pure and holy bride, Father. But the only way we can be holy is through your holiness, through your righteousness, Father God. Father, if you said if, if a man holds on to his life, he'll lose it. But if he loses it for your sake, he'll find it, Lord. May we lose our lives tonight, Father, that we may find it. That we may find that life and life more abundantly. Pray for everybody watching, everybody in this room, Father, that you just begin to do surgery on our hearts, Father God. Anything that, including myself, Father, anything that's getting in the way of us seeking you, Father, I pray that you just remove it, Father God. Doing this fast too, Father, I pray that you just start to separate, 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 separate anything that's hindering us from entering into your presence, Father God. You want to show us more. Deep calls unto deep. You want to take us deeper, Father God. You want to show us the deeper things, Father, because you love us. You have a plan for us. It's like treasures hidden, Lord, and you just want to keep showing us these treasures, Father God. It was like a treasure that a man hid in the field. He sold everything he had just to get that treasure, Lord. And that's what the gospel is. Father, you want to give us the ribeye steaks of the word, Father. You want to give us the mashed potatoes and the lobster and everything good in this word, Father. Let us not be satisfied tonight, Father, but let us hunger and thirst after righteousness, Father God. Bless everyone in here in the name of Jesus, Father God. And I pray that we can continue to come together perfectly knit in love, Father. Let love 
Let love conquer everything, Lord. Let that love cover a multitude of sins, Lord. Let that love just, just flood through us, Lord God, like a, like a rushing flood, Father. Let that love flow out into the streets, Father, of Bavard County, into this whole world, Father. I pray you use every one of us on our workplaces, our sphere of influence. Each one reach one, and when you reach one, you teach one. We thank you for tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.